Hey guys, it's Dakota. Welcome back for another happy homebrew Wednesday. So a lot going on this week, guys. Um, drinking on some of my last homebrew that I do have. It's actually in bottle. This is the first ever all grain that I did. I did with Chad. Um, we did all grain also, but we had double brew that. It's a uh, an IPA. If I remember right, I used eight ounces of hops. I used for first wort hoppy, dry hopped it, because um, I remember using the half pound hops. But uh, pretty good. Uh, it's still got the distinctive Simcoe bittering uh, bitterness to it. Uh, if you guys ever use Simcoe hops, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Uh, hop aroma slightly there with the, the kind of dank fruits, uh, tropical fruits, kind of um, a little musky. Uh, but the hop flavor is not quite so there. You can tell it's an older IPA, the hops are fading. So I think I have a six pack and two bombers left, so it's gonna hold me over until this next brew. Still good though, it really good. I like that Simcoe, Simcoe hop. But, so what's going on? So at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna show how to, actually two parts of a how to. First part is how to uh, vacuum seal hops using a food saver. Uh, my last home brew club meeting, we actually had a uh, bulk hops for sale. Uh, we teamed up with our uh, local brewery here in town, um, and they let us buy hops for them pretty much at a discount. We got uh, a pound of hops, which is 16 ounces, guys, for $7, which is <laughs> damn good deal. Uh, we had three hop varieties to choose from this time. We had Cascade, Warrior, and Summit. I bought a pound of Cascade and a half pound of Warrior. So for a uh, pound and a half of hops, $10. Can't complain there, guys. I'd spend that on a, probably spend more than that on an IPA brew. So and I have plenty to left to go. Vacuum sealed them, threw them in the freezer, they're gonna last for a while. So that leads me into the next brew. Um, I'm gonna do a IPA this coming Saturday, for this Saturday. You guys watching the video on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, this Saturday, I'm doing a barn brew with a couple buddies in our brew club. Uh, barn brew because we're gonna brew in his barn. Uh, it lives up in Michigan. Um, it's gonna be, I think, five or six of us that are brewing. Gonna do all grain batch, um, which, interesting. Last night, I went to, Tuesday night, I went to a uh, local bar here in town. We'll, Kind of far away, but anyway, it's somewhat local. And they had a great tap list. They had 90 minute IPA, they had uh, a brown ale. I can't really remember who it was from, but they had a nitro, which was brown ale. If you ever had those on nitro, awesome brews. Uh, I had two of those, two 16 ounces of those. those that's, that nitro with the brown really, really hit the spot. Um, you know, a little bit creative, not doing it to stout, do it with brown ale. Great beer. <laughs> But anyway, this, this place had awesome tap lists. They had some cast, stuff on cask. Uh, I'll definitely be going back there. But anyway, the beer that I kind of gravitate, gravitated towards was uh, from Southern Tier. It's called Unearthly. Unearthly. It's uh, an IPA of theirs, and it's barrel aged. So I'm doing a IPA on Saturday. So why not throw some oak chips into the secondary along with my dry, along with dry hops, dry hop it and see how that goes. So, that's gonna be my little twist on brew, brew day on Saturday. Um, the nice oaky flavors, they they kind of played well. Uh, you can say slightly tanniny from some of the oak, but I think the oak really did come through even, even with the high hot presence that, that uh, unearthly beer had from Southern Earth here. Great brew. Um, wasn't too expensive on tap, uh, but it was, it was a great brew. So I'm doing IPA, long story short. I'm gonna throw some oak chips in the secondary. Um, gonna read a little bit about them. Uh, I haven't used oak chips yet before, but I'm guessing you pretty much have to sanitize them like everything else for you throwing sand in and, uh, secondary. I know a lot of people use bourbon, you know, spirits, vodka, that kind of stuff to sanitize them. Uh, some people said don't use water because it extracts more of the tannins, but uh, why don't you just throw them the stars in? So I'm gonna do a little bit of reading up on it. You guys do something that you do. Washers going in the background, so hopefully it's not too loud. Um, but so that's the plan for brew day. Oats, IPA. I'm gonna dry hop it. Uh, it's gonna be all Warrior and Cascade. 
all the hops that just bought. Got to use them. Got to use them. So that is going to be the next brew. Cause I got I got to fill my keg, man. I'm, I'm running out of homebrew. I got to brew some like quick, quick to turn around, so I can uh, start drinking it because I'm I'm running low. So the big equipment, guys. There's also a hard how-to part at the end of this video as well. Besides the hot party, all grain on Saturday. It's gonna be the first time I'm using this. Oh yeah, that's right, guys. Don't know if you can see me in there. Built my mash tun. So, quick little view around this bad boy. Uh, it's a 10 gallon mash tun. Uh, I got all my parts from. Uh, no, not the the cooler. Got that from Home Depot, obviously. But. All the parts I got from brewhardware.com, which is where I got all my stuff from my uh, boil kettle. Bobby from New Jersey hooks you up right. Three piece ball valve. Uh, it's only a couple bucks more than the two piece, so why not, why not get it? I like it. You can take it apart, clean it. Uh, half inch uh, hose barb. Easy to put hoses on, on, and off. I'll go to where it disconnects. All this stuff, don't mind that. That's, uh, that's got it in there for storage right now. But zoom in here. See, I got the weldless bulkhead with the silicone gasket there. Another hose barb connecting, and then uh, this tubing is supposed to be uh, okay for the high temperatures, so should be fine. And then uh, the reason I have this clamp on this side and not this side, this is a half inch, which the inner diameter of the tubing is. This hose barb appears a little bit smaller, so I got this uh, stainless clamp also from Brew Hardware and fasten it down to uh, make a better seal. So hopefully everything will be fine. It's nice and snug in there. Uh, really excited about that, guys. So, uh, so we'll see how that goes. I don't foresee any complications with it. Uh, I still need to do a wet test with it to uh, make sure that uh, enough Teflon tape on there, no leaks. <coughs> no charge, but make sure everything's all good to go, do a wet test, make sure, you know, like I said, no leaks, uh, make sure it's enough seal with that one uh, clamp on there, now I might have to get a smaller clamp, tighten it even more, um, but yeah, that's about it guys, pretty exciting, um, so that's about it, uh, a lot going on in the background, got the microwave going, the washer, so hopefully you guys can still hear me but that's about it guys so I don't want to make this too long I'm rambling and rambling and I also got those uh, little how-to how -to videos here at the end so stick around and you guys will be able to watch me uh, vacuum seal some hops with the food saver and also put together that mash tun so uh, that's it for this homebrew Wednesday guys uh, oh one more thing one more thing uh, if you guys had uh, summer uh, Summer Shanty, right? Pretty sure, Shanty, yeah. Some, uh, Summer Shanty from Lightning Google. I wanna make a beer like that because that'd be phenomenal to have on top, tap throughout the summer. If you have any idea, if you kind of made, made one similar, let me know. I uh, have yet to look up recipes for it, but that, that'd be a great beer to have on tap. It's nice, refreshing. Um, shoot me a message, shoot, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys ever done one or planning on doing one, just let me know because that near future summer coming around springs be an awesome beer but uh all right guys watch these how to's we'll see you next time cheers all right we're back <laughs> i think we got it this time go ahead and seal it yeah there it goes sealing in the meantime there's harley he says hello it's brew dog There it is, guys. Ounce Warrior vacuum seal. This is supposed to last a couple years in the freezer. All the oxygen's out of it. Don't gotta worry about oxidizing. Hop stay good. Good to go. So, uh, we'll come back a little bit later. Right. What's up, guys? That's a long one. Cheers. But, it didn't take too long to show you what you got. We have 16 ounces, 16 baggies of Cascades, 16.7 alpha acid, 
pretty good for a cascade. And then we have eight ounces of the Warrior. I only got a half pound of the Warrior. Uh, it's 16 alpha, so that'd be a pretty damn good uh, bittering hop. Um, so it didn't take too long. Uh, longest part was uh, cutting all the baggies for him, so I got him in a roll. So it didn't take too long, but uh, figured I might as well vacuum seal him to let him last a little bit longer and uh, not worry about the oxidation. I mean, plan on brewing a lot, so I just have to do quite a few IPAs. Um, use up the warrior in the cascade, but uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I just wanted to do a uh, a real quick video of. Uh, vacuum sealing hops. Uh, some people also, there are, I do have an extension for the vacuum sealer. Uh, you can put it on a, uh, a uh, mason jar, put it on a lid and it sucks out all the, uh, the oxygen that's in it. And then what most people do, since there, there is still air in there, um, they purge it with uh, CO2. Uh, got a keg hookup, purge it with a little bit of CO2 and uh, supposed to work and it actually creates a, a vacuum I guess when you put the CO2 in there so uh, that's cool I know a couple of these that do that me I have a vacuum sealer so I figured you know it'd just be easier for me to put them in one ounce increments for brew days and stuff like that so uh, I mean you kind of do whatever you want but uh, yeah guys uh, it was seven bucks a pound for the hops so I, I pent, uh, spent ten bucks and I got you know uh, what is it 16 I got 24 ounces of hops for 10 bucks, so yeah, did short me one. <laughs> Good call. I did. I got a seven of the warrior, but I'll let that one slide this time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, that's a quick one. Don't want to make it too long. Just basic uh, how to. And uh, see you guys next time. Hey guys, it's Dakota back again. Figured I did the vacuum sealing the hops. Figured I'd do another quick how to video for uh, building a mash ton. I went and picked up a 10 gallon uh, cooler from Home Depot, 45 bucks, and then I picked up a couple parts off of brewhardware.com. Check that site out, pretty good site. Bobby there hooks everybody up and uh, he uh, responds if you need any help and he ships pretty quick too. I ordered these uh, Friday night, like at midnight, and got them today, today's Wednesday, so. But what I got, guys, from Bobby, I got two all stainless uh, hose clamps. Um, the bulkhead came with some also extra washer and a spacer. And, um, the big hardware I got, guys, was another three-piece uh, stainless ball valve. Um, I like the three-piece. They're only a couple more bucks more on his site uh, in case you ever want to take them apart and clean them. So I'll pay the extra. I think it's like four bucks to get these versus a single um, half-inch hose barb. Uh, I already got the Teflon tape in there kind of make this video a little bit shorter, a little bit quicker. Um, so there's that. And here's the part that goes inside the cooler, guys. This is the, the wobbleless bulkhead. So it's gonna go inside the cooler, right? Once I take this nut off, it goes through there. And then the, uh, the um, ball valve is gonna screw to the tip of this. So that's how it's gonna all connect. And then I have my uh, false bottom. And then the hose barb on this was a little bit smaller, so I used one of those clamps to uh, clamp it together pretty tight. Um, and I'm going to have to cut the hose to the length. This is one of the hoses that are supposed to be, uh, you know, that won't bother with the heat and everything. So let me get all set up here, and I'll show you guys how to do this. So give me a few seconds, I'll come back to you. All right, guys, we're back. So I left the battery charge a little bit. Uh, it's running low, so, you know, I had to postpone it. But let's go ahead and build this mash tun. So, first things first, I kinda already did this a little bit just to make it easier. Um, the spigot that's on the outside, to take it off in the inside, if you guys can see there, it's a little uh, lock nut. So, I already pre-loosened uh, it. So, give me a second here. Can't do it one-handed. Hold on. You guys can see the mash tun. Hopefully, uh, you just can't see the inside. But all I'm doing is unscrewing. I have to hold this now because it's moving with it. So you guys can see it pretty much just slides out. That's all it is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this in case I, uh, whenever I do convert my kegel into a mash tun, I can uh, put this back on the cooler and use it. So you guys can see that. 
got the hole through the cooler. That's what we need. It's a uh, perfect size for these uh, bulkheads. Uh, I think they're half inch bulkheads, I believe so. All you have to do now, this can be hard again for me to do one handed, so I'm gonna demonstrate it and then actually do it, set the camera down. So this end of it, there's a silicone washer there against the hex nut, but that goes through there like that. You guys can see there's uh, there's about three threads sticking through it. So this is why I need to do it with two hands. So I stick that through there. Get this, you guys can see the female end there. Screw it together and then, since there's only about three th uh, threads sticking out there with that silicone washer, the more I tighten it, uh, the better seal it's gonna get. So I'm gonna have to tighten it a few times to uh, create a better seal. But I'm gonna have to go ahead and sit this down. Guys, I will show you afterwards how it all looks together. But uh, yeah, bear with me here for a second. So I'm taking the bulkhead, sticking it through the cooler, do my ball valve. I'm gonna get it threaded here. And threaded. inside too much. So I wanted to cut down into it. But I still want a good seal. I gotta set down here quick guys. Uh, so I can get a better view inside. Looks okay. It's uh pinching it down. Nice and firm, not too tight I don't think, but I do have an extra silicone washer just in case. But, that's pretty much the gist of it guys. Um, like I said with these you don't want to over tighten too much because, see if I can get zoomed in here. The silicone washer that goes up against there, you can see here on the corners, right there how it's starting to get a little bit too pinched. So I might backen this off a little bit, but uh, that's pretty much what creates a good seal to it. And then, back back out here. Well that's going to fit down in there, but that's pretty much I have to uh, cut this to length so I can get it to fit. It came in a foot, so I just have to cut it to length and then I will come back and show you guys the final picture of the mash tub. We'll be back. Again guys, so match done is finally put together, all hooked up. Let's take a look. So, pretty uh, simple and easy. We got the three piece ball valve with the uh, half inch hose bar so we can get hoses up to it pretty easy. Uh, it closes completely without hitting the edge of the cooler so that works great, enough spacing. And then, on the inside, finally all put together is everything. So I'll zoom in here quick guys. So you guys can see we got the wallless bulkhead put in there with the silicone gasket so it makes a good seal. Uh, the little bit of hose in there that's uh, supposed to be, can't forget exactly what it's called but it's, it's fine to be heated and everything else to like 200 degrees so it's fine. Um, the hose barb on the false bottom was a little bit smaller so I had to get a stainless uh, hose clamp and just clamped it together. So yeah, I will end up doing a dry test or a wet test of it I guess you call it here pretty soon to make sure there's no leaks and make sure there's good seals here so that it uh, 
sucks out everything. There's going to be a little bit of dead space. I'm going to also test that. Um, so that's it, guys. Quick how-to. Hopefully it wasn't too long of uh, how to build a mesh on out of a 10-gallon cooler.